Now, UKIP MEPs Stephen Wolfe and Mike Hookham have been reported to the police over an altercation that left Mr Wolfe in hospital earlier this month, that much we know. European Parliament President Martin Schulz said he'd referred the incident to the French authorities and had, quote, no doubts about Mr Wolfe's allegations that he was punched by Mr Hookham. It's prompted an extraordinary exchange in the European Parliament involving Mr Schulz, Mr Hookham and the UKIP leader, Nigel Farage. Uh, let's have a look at that now. Mr. Hookham has asked to take the floor. Please proceed, Mr. Hookham. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Earlier today, Mr. Weber made a defamatory statement against me, which you supported. Uh, can I ask that both you gentlemen leave this building where you don't have parliamentary immunity and repeat those statements so I can take legal action against you? Herr Abgeordneter Mr. Hookham, the, I have forwarded the dossier relating to you to the prosecutor's office in Strasbourg. Any further investigations against, uh, against you or about you are in the hands of the prosecutor. I can say no more, and I have not communicated anything else to the House. If you want to take... Uh, steps against me uh, by civil procedure, you can go ahead and do so. Do that here in Strasbourg, in Germany. I would have no problem uh, at all with uh, seeing you in court. I'd be very pleased to do so. Mr. Farage. I said in this chamber that I felt the French commissioner, Jacques Barrault, was unsuitable to be a European commissioner because he'd received a conviction for embezzlement and been suspended from public office. Uh, it, the, the, despite the fact what I said was true, it caused a huge outcry. Uh, and I was told that because he'd been amnestied by President Chirac under French law, it was an offence ever in public in France to refer to the incident. So there was a lot of speculation over whether the French police were going to come into this building and arrest me. But the President of the Parliament at the time said, no, that is not the case, because the European Parliament, rather like the United Nations in New York, is an, is an organisation whose buildings are extra-territorial. So that ruling was perfectly clear. How can it be, with that precedent having been set, that you can refer an alleged incident between two MEPs that took place in an official committee room in this parliament to the French police. Can you please tell us, are these buildings extraterritorial or are we actually here now in France under French law? Mr Farage. First of all, we have the rules of procedure, and that is what the MEPs are subject to, according to the rules of procedure. Members are bound by minimum standards, and uh, that would include mutual respect. Jetzt ist es in der letzten in the last plenary uh, session, Mr. Wolf left the plenary chamber and uh, collapsed on one of the bridges just by the plenary chamber and required immediate uh, medical assistance, which was also provided by colleagues who are qualified doctors. Um, Mr. Wolf was taken to a hospital here in Strasbourg. It became clear from tests there that the collapse was the result of a, a physical attack on his head. I mean, specifically, he was hit on the head. So, we asked Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf explained the situation from his viewpoint. I uh, forwarded the matter to the relevant committee. Uh, the committee that's in charge of the code of conduct for members of the committee 
recommended that the issue be passed on to the uh, French authorities, to the French prosecutor's office. Why? Yes, we are extraterritorial, but that doesn't mean people uh, cannot be prosecuted for criminal activities. That would be a, a pretty remarkable uh, conception of extraterritoriality. If crimes are perpetrated in this house, then they are subject to prosecution, uh, subject to the law of the uh, country concerned. Here, France, Mr. Wolf has made a statement. Mr. Hookham, you've made a statement. I am obliged to communicate to the House what I do in this case. Hmm. Let's turn to our political correspondent, Darren McCaffrey, who's in Westminster. Uh, Darren, welcome to you. Is this about law enforcement or naked politics? It is most certainly, without a shadow of a doubt, about naked politics, Colin. Let me talk you through what is happening here. Essentially, there are two inquiries into what potentially happened or what didn't potentially happen a few weeks ago there in Strasbourg. First of all, there was an inquiry launched by Malton Schultz, who's the EU uh, uh, president of the parliament uh, a few weeks ago by a committee to try and find out whether Mike Hookham punched Stephen Wolf essentially. Now, that committee has reported back saying essentially we can see, we can't find any witnesses, we do not know. So they've handed it back to Martin Schulz, who's then handed it to the French police to investigate. And indeed, when the French police investigate, that there could be sanctions applied to UKIP if, for example, it is found that Stephen Wolfe was indeed intact by Mike Hookham. Now, in addition to that, we've spoken to Stephen Wolf saying, well, this is all a bit of a red herring because he ultimately referred this matter to the French police a few weeks ago. Uh, and essentially, they reached the conclusion that he was punched in the face. He says there is undoubtable medical evidence that he was punched in the face. To add to all of that, that man on Stephen Wolf's uh, left hand side there, Nigel Farage, he launched an internal UKIP investigation, which I can tell you is due to be published in the next few hours. Now, I've just spoken to Nigel Farage. He insists that Stephen Wolfe was not punched in the face. He says there is no evidence that Stephen Wolfe was punched, despite the fact that, of course, he turned up at hospital just an hour after this incident had happened and posed for photographs with Stephen Wolfe. Now, might, why might he do all of that? Let's go back to your naked politics, Colin, because Stephen Wolfe ultimately, of course, has now left UKIP and Nigel Farage is trying to show up support behind Mike Hookham. So I suspect when this report comes out later on today from UKIP, essentially Mike Hookham will be let off the hook and the blame will be uh, will be squarely behind uh, Stephen Wolfe, who's now left the party. Ultimately, it turns into an enormous mess where you've got the French police investigating this in Strasbourg at the behest of the European Parliament and the behest of Stephen Wolfe, and you've got an internal UKIP report that's likely to suggest that it was Stephen Wolfe's fault in the first place and that Mark Hookham has, uh, has got no blame at all. Crikey. Darren, it's a complicated story. You've made it about as lucid as it's possible to in two and a half minutes. Thanks a lot.